Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. This week, uh, we're going to talk about being and doing. But first, I had a couple of questions that I'd like to uh, address. And so the first one came up from our exercise last week with the with opening the spine, at, and particularly from the mid back area, we're trying to create that. And, and Sharon had a question about the opening the jade pillow gate while in extension. And just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here is, is whenever we're, uh, we're say we're going back like this and we're opening up. So that's, we're an extension that, I mean, that, that we're going that way. So the idea here is that we're, we're arching the back, but we also want to lengthen it as we do that. So whenever I say open the jade pillow gate while doing that, you want to reach with the crown of your head. So it's not just a, a, a leaning backward like that. There's actually a, uh, it's like you're, you're reaching up and out with, the, with, with, your, with your head. So what that does is it creates space between the vertebrae and then you get a bigger opening. The jade pillow gate will physically close down. That's, that's a given because you're leaning backward. But if you are thinking lengthening lengthening the spine as you do that, then it's not as uh, severe a, uh, a pinch there. Because you can, you can make out a real pinch when you do that. But if you open first, reach first with the, with, the, with the crown of the head and then reach back, then there's a tendency to lengthen and create some more space there, which means that you're going to get um, more extension, but also it's going to activate the tensegrity of the whole structure by reaching with that and then opening. You're going to get, uh, you're going to activate the tensegrity of the structure. So it's not going to be as um, hard on the body. And in fact, it's going to be the opposite. It's going to open, it's going to lengthen and, and create more. Uh, more space in your spine and as well as your your back. So does that uh, does that handle that for you, uh, Sharon? That good? Okay, great, thanks. Okay, so the next question was getting out of bed in the morning. Um, so the vitality that is necessary to to just want to face the day and to, to be able to get, to kind of embrace it with some, some level of, uh, of enthusiasm and, um, and, and energy. And so part of this is a physical situation, you know, that, that's your diet and exercise, that sort of thing. Uh, part of it is your, your mental, approach you know what what do i have to look forward to today do there's a, a lot of that has to do if, if if it's christmas and you want to see what santa brought you then oh boy oh boy you can't stay in bed but if it's like oh god i got it's monday and i got to go to work and uh, uh really dreading this then it may be a little less enthusiasm for the uh for the proposition so the incentive one has to get out of the out of bed. A lot of it, a big lot of it, has to do with that. You know, what have I set up for myself to to do in the morning? How how friendly is that day going to be toward me? You know, if I get up there and, and greet it. So the uh, um, that goes a long way toward establishing more vitality in the system. So the um, uh, and the simple answer to that is you set up a day that is worth living. <laughs> that is that for me. I uh, wake up every day 
And I start off with kind of opening up to new possibilities. And, um, you know, might take a form of, it's a good day to be alive. Just say, just as a statement, it's a good day to be alive, you know, and, and that establishes some, a frame of reference that, oh, okay, we've, we've embraced this day as a, a worthwhile day to, to occupy my attention. Um, the, uh, also, what else is possible? It's sort of a, that's a generic mantra of mine, but it, it says that if I open up to new possibilities, then it's, um, it takes some of the dread out of like, oh no, I've got to handle the bills or got to mow the lawn or whatever it is that, that, that one might be dreading. So going to work or whatever. So the, uh, you, what else is possible? Then again, that opens up the mind to embrace new possibilities. That's another, another thing. These are all like psychological tricks that you can play to, to get yourself, get your motor, get your motor going. And then beyond that, there is the energetic component. That is, you know, what kind of shape is my chi in? You know, what, uh, what time of day am I getting up? Am I connecting it up with, with where my body is, where my, my rhythm is at that time? Uh, how well did I sleep last night, et cetera. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of that. What is, the, what is the energy? And then the general energy thing is, if I only feel lousy when I'm getting up in the morning, but I feel great the rest of the day, okay, then that's a specific thing. If it's, the, if the morning thing is just representative of how I feel the whole day, then it's a larger issue. And that means that I have to address my chi, uh, learning to regulate my chi in such a way as to, uh, to harness it and allow it to animate my activities so that it's everything is working in concert, every, I'm feeling more coherent about my day and, and the like. So there's, it's a, I would say that it's a, a broader topic and one that probably uh, there's no one answer. It's one of those things that one has to uh, engage in, in, in dialogue and actually start looking at what is it? Really kind of getting real with oneself and say, okay, why am I dreading getting up? Why am I feeling this lethargic? Uh, is it something I ate? Is it something, is it uh, just that I'm going through a rough patch? Is it uh, whatever, you know, the one has to uh, evaluate that. And that's something that is, um, yeah, uh, uh, I'm happy to, to talk to people about that too, you know, if, um, in, in, in private. So we can, we can discuss exactly what people need on that, because it's a real individual thing. Um, any questions or thoughts on that before we move forward? All good? Okay, kind of generic uh, answers to a question, but that's uh, good. So let's talk about being and doing. And uh, this came out of a question, uh, the, or a, puzzle or question, I guess, that, that Nick posed uh, um, on a call a couple of days ago, and we were discussing, uh, and the, uh, I'm going to summarize the, the issue. So what's the difference between entering the gap between thoughts and knowing about it and going into a situation where, like, say, you're driving a car and it's a familiar journey. You, you start off, you leave home. Next thing you know, you're at the office or at school or whatever, and you're, uh, uh, you, you don't remember having gotten there. You're, you're just like, oh, here I am, huh? What happened? How, how did I do that? So the, uh, so the, the, the question is, is there a difference between the two? And this actually goes into a larger discussion about Tai Chi and, and, and the way people do their Tai Chi trend. Because um, frequently I've, I've heard people 
tell me like, oh yeah, I just like to learn the form so I don't have to think. So I can just kind of just go through it and kind of zone out and I don't, you know, I just, I just follow along and I don't have to think about it. And, and uh, I just kind of get lost in the, in the movements. And, uh, and that is a, you know, I think a similar type of approach to the idea of driving your car and doing it quite well, not getting in any accidents or killing anybody along the way, at least that you know of. And, you know, then you get there and like, you, you had all this time to listen to the radio or think deep thoughts or whatever. But it, uh, in both cases, what I would say is the, the distinction there is there was no real choice, no real decision to be, to, and when I say the, a choice to be, because in, a, in subjective terms, that is my relationship to the event, there is a decision to occupy space and time. That's what I call being, you know, that is, I am going to be in a form, in a place at a time. And to the extent that I can bring my awareness to that event, then I am present. Um, if I'm doing dishes while thinking about a song or writing something in my, uh, my head or whatever, I'm not really present with the dishes. I may be present with my, my thoughts. I've chosen something else to do, but I haven't, my, my presence is, I'm not in that, that position. I'm not in that space and time. I'm in somewhere else. I'm in my thoughts. And, um, the difference is that when I'm in that state, I'm in the, I'm using the eye of flesh and the eye of mind in both those situations. The eye of mind in that case is happening almost at a pre-conscious level. That is, there's, I'm not really aware of what I'm doing, but you know, thoughts are happening and I'm kind of you know, plugging into them. They're kind of carrying me along. And the eye of flesh is that I'm actually doing stuff, even though I'm not really needing all my focus to do that. And the difference occurs whenever we knowingly are bringing our awareness to this event so that we are present. And that's when we open the door to the eye of spirit. That's when we start to make the shift. And so in Tai Chi, uh, there are different levels of involvement. And at the body level, you know, where uh, Cheng Man Cheng calls it the man level, you know, the uh, Yang Jing Ming says, you're regulating the body and regulating the emotional mind. And regulate, uh, you know, at, at that level, you are actually just regulating the body. You're you're doing what is necessary to get to get the physical actions done, um, and both of these are like kind of entry level tai chi. If we want to move into the big kids class, we uh, we have to bring our awareness in such a way as to be actually present for the event, moment by moment. So it, it's, that's when Tai Chi Chuan becomes a, a moving meditation. It's whenever we are able to disconnect from the chatter that is going on in the, uh, the default mode network of the brain, and we're able to then flip it around. So this is where the we start to take control of our thinking apparatus. In um, uh, there's in uh, Taiji Chuan through the Western Gate in the last chapter, I I, I uh, quoted heavily from a book called uh, "The Secret of the Golden Flower," and it's a um, 
um, a Chan Buddhist, uh, Taoist, Confucius kind of uh, synthesis that was presented as a lay manual in, uh, in China a few centuries back, about a couple hundred years ago. And, and it draws a distinction between the, um, when the servant becomes the master, and that's whenever the conscious mind takes over and it's running the show. And that's when we're hearing the, the, the thinky thinky stuff is happening. The eye of, eye of mind is, is in charge. And, but whatever you flip that around and it, um, they actually describe it as a, it's like having a, um, uh, a, a, a powerful general who takes over and wants to run everything. And it's where the, the servant becomes the master. And the idea there is to flip that around so that your essence takes over and your mind becomes the servant. And that's what we're doing there. So in the, when we talk about being in a state of being, that's what's happening. We're moving into a state where we are so present that the door to that I have, I have spirit opens up and we are able to then unify the whole system, which then allows us to move into a highly enhanced state of coherence where really cool stuff starts to happen. That's when we start to access the upper levels of Taiji Chuan. So in uh, Ching Man Ching's version, it was like there was the first uh, level was man and then came earth and then came uh, Shen or spirit. And that level of spirit is where we we start to actually access this stuff. And that's where we are getting into the gap between thoughts. And what that means is that you're able to quiet the mind, regulate the mind to such a degree that you're able to then go to that gap between the thoughts. And that's when you have direct access to intention to will to um to just making cool stuff happen and so what i would like to propose is that that each as we move into this 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 day as we get familiar with this that we consciously move into a state of being first and then do so the and I've heard even masters talk about, yeah, you just do your, your form and, and the stuff happens and the chi will happen or, or you'll move into a, uh, you move into a meditative state or whatever. And I'm saying, let's reverse that. Let's do the, let's do it the other side first and then do our form, do our Taiji Chan from that enhanced state where we're moving in the direction of what the uh, Chan Buddhist called your original face, you know, and the, uh, um, your, the Taoist, you know, they spoke of it as your essential spirit. And uh, so moving in that direction. So uh, you have a question or you have a, you say, get it on? Yeah. No. <laughs> um, uh, so the, uh, so what I'd like to do is uh, do an exercise now. And um, the way I propose to do this is to move into that state of being is to actually feel, consciously feel. And that is the language of the body-mind, the feeling. So if you can, instead of thinking about feeling, you actually feel, then we, we are able to then regulate that. And I know I've talked a lot about this, but I'd like to do a little exercise now and take it something we actually have some familiarity with. So we'll just take it and we'll, we'll pause along the way and we'll, uh, we'll actually uh, 
uh, explore the being and doing part. Before, uh, before we do that, any questions or thoughts? Gallery, anybody? Wonder, everybody good? Okay, all right, let's do it. Okay, begin with your right foot forward. And this is an exercise we've done before. Bring your weight into your back leg and relax there. So what we wanna do is to pause. We're gonna feel into these different, different spots. We're gonna feel it and, and consciously be, then consciously do. All right, so feeling the ball of the right foot and just begin with that. Just you're bringing your awareness to the ball of the right foot. You feel the whole foot. The weight is spread throughout the whole foot, but you're bringing your awareness primarily to the ball of the foot as, as a as a um, your the target, the bullseye. And now bring your knee out and feel that setting so that you are consciously engaging the knee and the ball of the foot. And just feel into that. Because this is something that is worthwhile just, just to do this, just to feel these things. And now you're going to feel the ball, set the knee and begin release the quad, the right quad. You're gonna spiral down to the left. As you do that, as you release, you're gonna reach out and open up with your right elbow. Your right palm is down, feel that, feel the, uh, the right elbow reaching, feel the shoulder opening. And I want you also to feel you want to reach out with the left elbow also and feel that the space between your vertebrae or between your um, scapula, right? Um, feel that opening as well. So you're, you're actually, you're, kind of, you're reaching out from the spine because power is generated from the spine. So you feel the elbow, reach with that, reach with both elbows and feel that, that space opening up there. And spiral down to the left. And as you do that, rotate the right forearm, palm up. So you're reaching out with that. You're reaching out with the elbow. You're opening up between your shoulder blades. Reach with your left elbow. Reach with, your, reach with the fingers of, of both hands. And feel into that and feel into that state of being. And notice the gap between thoughts. Now turn the waist. The knee is not moving, the waist is turning. Reach with that right elbow, rotate your forearm. Reach, feel both hands reaching. And feel the chi immediately surging between the hands. And just feel into that state of being. Okay, now feel the ball of the left foot. And set the left knee. And reach with the elbows. Feel that opening in the back and spiral down to the right. And as you do that, you reach down with your right elbow. You're pulling down with the right hand and you're reaching out with the left hand and rotating the left forearm, palm up. And just pause there.
reach with both elbows and just feel the gin that's being produced here. Feel the vitality. Now turn the waist to the, to the left, reach with those elbows, rotate the left forearm. You're in your left leg now. Really open, feel the shoulders opening. Now feel the ball of the right foot. And just feel that state of being. Feel the potentiality that gets created just by having establishing that point. Because your weight is still in your left leg. So the left leg is still substantial. But now you're establishing a point in your right foot. Feel the ball of the right foot. Now push your right knee forward and set that. And notice we've, we've changed the substantiality. Now the right leg is starting to get more substantial. And feel the chi in your hands. Feel it through your whole body. Feel the chin as your body is expressing that chi. A spiral down to the left. And as you do that, left, reach with those left elbows, or both elbows, reach down with your left elbow, rotate your right forearm palm up. Feel that. Release down, sink your sung kwa. You're releasing down and feeling the, the stillness there and also the potentiality. Now turn, rotate your right forearm. Your weight is primarily in your right leg. I want you to pause a moment and just notice how big that gap between the thoughts is as you're doing this. How it keeps expanding. The more you, the more you embrace the feeling, the more you, you allow your brain to shift into the feeling mode. Now feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee. So now we're shifting into the left leg. That becomes a substantial leg. Spiral down, reach with the elbows. Rotate the left forearm. We're spiraling down to the right. You feel that. Turn, so you're back into doing again, but it's a conscious doing. Feel the ball of the right foot. Actually, we're gonna shift feet now. Put your left foot forward. To the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee. Spiral down to the right. Reach with the elbows. Left hand rotates palm up. Those elbows turn, rotate the forearm.
right ball. Feel that. Notice the gap between thoughts. Set the knee. Feel that. Feel the ball, feel the knee, feel your quad, your elbows, your whole body. Spiral down to the left, reach for the elbows, rotate the forearm. Turn. Feel the connection between your shoulder, your shoulder blades, connecting the arms. Notice the bow shape in the arms. Feel the ball of the left foot. Push your left knee forward, set that. Feel into that. Spiral down to the right. Feel your elbows, rotate the forearm, palm up. Feel the energy field that is being produced between the two hands. You can kind of play with that. You kind of pull them against each other and, and notice that you've got, there's kind of a stickiness there. Kind of a, like a elasticity or something there. And then turn into your left leg. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. Bow down to the left, feel your elbows. Rotate the forearm. So consciously do, you're consciously turning. an opening, and then we're back to being again. And step back, and come down. Reach out with your elbows. Take a moment and just allow the energy to circulate. Feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Step in. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Dissolve it all. Disappear the chi, empty out. Yeah, take a seat, please. See if there's any questions or comments.
Okay, how'd that go? Stan, you, you, you have to get off mute, Stan. Okay, now that's better. Okay, I noticed that uh, uh, when I don't forget about the spine, after a while, it seems like it's uh, the uh, discs are even further apart. It feels like that. And I noticed too uh, that the bottom of my feet, they're like the root is going down much more intensely than before. Right. Yeah, it is. It is fantastic feeling. Wonderful. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? <sighs> Questions, thoughts, complaints? Dennis. You're on mute, Dennis. You're on mute, Dennis. You're on mute, Dennis. Yes, there you go. Open, yeah, yeah, the, the elbows again. And, and using the elbows to open the shoulder blades. It's really getting to be the key to things. Nice. Good. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a biggie. It is. Big, it really is. It, it, until you do it, you, you're unaware of how uninvolved that area of your back is, your mid back is in, in yeah. your action. You just kind of, yeah, I'm doing this, you know, but it's not, it's not, mm, not that, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a biggie. Good. Cool. Anybody else? Uh, Valerie. Um, really, really getting that sense of uh, steel wrapped in cotton. Good. Good. It, at some points, it feels like it's all steel. <laughs> there's, no, there's no muscle going on, so I know that I'm not tense. It just is so big, you know, mm. and so solid. It's, it's really great, really great. Wonderful, good. Rick? You ever uh, float in the Dead Sea in Israel? <laughs> I, no. You, well, when you do, it's mostly salt, so you float extremely well. This felt to me like floating in the chi sea <laughs> that was made out of just thick, rubbery, jello-like energy that went from limb to limb. It was awesome. We wanted to <laughs> rave. We wanted to rave, but we calmed down. We calmed the fuck down. It was really great. It was really good. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Great. Anybody else? Lynn. Um, yes, very wonderful. Um, so I find that in those moments where you really feel the, the oppositions, the two poles sort of moments, right? Where like just when you're separating, feeling the stretch between the hands or the, you know, feeling the, the foot to hand or something like that, it really pulses it up, right? Like it really deepens and strengthens the, 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 the energy. Yeah. yeah. So is that something that, I mean, it's a being, it's a becoming aware of that, not a doing, right? Um, but um, yeah, that's just, I guess an observation. Wonderful, good. Yeah, poles in opposition. And to do that, you actually have to be there. You know, if, yes. if, if I do this, you know, and I'm, you know, not really involved with that action, nothing's going on or not much is going on. Right. But if I go and I really bring awareness to that, to the moment, I occupy a state of intense being, uh, uh, then there is a profound feeling that's happening there between the hands. There's a, so uh, that is how we do this thing. This is how we do this Tai Chi thing that we've been, we've all been playing with for so long. And this is the, uh, this is, we're getting to the fun part now. This is where we get to do all the cool Tai Chi tricks. 
and um, and that's 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 a lot of fun. Ah, uh, cool. yes. Yeah, but slowing your practice down so that you're not mailing it in. You know, you're actually bringing way way down so that you can you can occupy the moment you are in occupy the space that you are in so um when we're in a state of heightened state of coherence we are coalescing into form that is we are creating a form that we are that our minds are bringing into a state of of uh, fullness, which then allows for this cool stuff to happen. And if we are in a pre-conscious state, the form is, is still observable to other people and maybe even to ourselves, but it's a, uh, um, it's just part of what is, it's just part of the environment. It's just another another piece of furniture in the room empty of beingness. what's that empty of beingness empty of beingness yeah so uh so being is a conscious thing that we do it's a an intentional thing and i use conscious um carefully there because it actually goes beyond consciousness mm -hmm. it goes to that state of awareness that goes beyond the conscious mind and into that state of super consciousness or where we start to access that prime primal spirit and this is when we're talking about taiji chuan as a spiritual path this is what we're talking about spirit in in the in the taiji tradition which leans heavily on chan buddhism leans heavily on taoism and even to some degree on Confucianism, it is the three treasures. It is that uh, uh, spirit is a is not something other, right? It, it, it it's it's you. <laughs> yes. It's you, and the way you access it is through this localized self that you got, you, you, you have a self and you may reach a state if you dive deep enough into that where it, it feels like, oh, ain't no self anymore. But it's still the self that's, that's saying that. And uh, you, you had something? Uh, yeah, does this what you mean when you're talking about body, mind, spirit integration, where the spirit, enlivens the body and quiets the mind and it all works together yeah did everybody hear that maria was saying is this what we mean by body mind spirit integration where the where spirit enlivens the body and quiets the mind and yes yeah that would be one way of, of putting it so it definitely is a body mind spirit integration which is what how i am defining super consciousness so that's where we are to a very uh, large degree we are working in concert with this body to occupy space and time and it seems to be a really handy thing to do to have a body to do this I can't really speak for those who do it without a body, but I uh, do know that it's it's really it's really useful having a body if you want to to occupy space and time, and that allows us to to be able to experience this state that takes us beyond the localized finite little bitty self and and go into the self that is non-objective self that is self that is not an object 
the self that is an object is what we call ego, which is just, you know, the thoughts I have about me. I say, oh, Rick's got long hair and he's wearing a white shirt and blah, blah, blah. What well, that's, that's, uh, that's me talking about me. And that's talking about that, the, the little self, the objective self, and which is also really handy to have too. Because then you can like remember cool stuff, you know, like what your name is and things. And, uh, uh, you know, you know that time I blah, 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 cool stuff like that. And that's real important too, I think. But uh, being able to, from that perspective, also move through this expanded state of awareness into a connection with that which is much, much greater. And that's that eye of spirit. And when we do that, and simultaneously with coalescing body and mind in, into a state of coherence, then really cool stuff happens. Cool. Anybody else? Thoughts, questions, statements? Uh, okay, okay. Good, good. Stan, you had something? Nope. Dennis. Right. Yeah, I've been reading. Uh, I've been reading Bob Klein's new book, and he was talking about well, body, the, the, the mind, and the body mind. The body mind being a. I don't know if I can get it get it quite right. The body mind being a, a, a bigger consciousness than the than the mind. And he talks like the soul. The soul doesn't sit on a shelf in the mind. It's actually bigger than that. And then the body mind, being aware of the body mind is a step to becoming aware of, of the, all the spirit, of, of all the energy, of all the universe. That everything is connected. Uh, cool. Um, I'm curious, so does he define body mind in that sense? It, it's sort of, a, it, it's just another level of consciousness. And there's another level of consciousness to be, to, to be, uh, don't quote me if I got it exactly right, but that's, that's the just of what I got out of it. Okay. Everything is connected and you, you, you can go beyond the, the body mind and connect with the whole universe. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I get what he's talking about there. And uh, I prefer to use awareness to, to describe different levels of, uh, you know, involvement with the with with the world so the you know when i talk about the eye of flesh that might be what he's talking about with the body mind and yeah. and that's where uh, and yes that we we get more information a million times more information through that than is able to be processed by the conscious mind so yeah. uh, so with that so that definitely is true but the, uh, it is bringing those two together that allows us to access something much greater. So I suspect that uh, you know, it might be something along those lines. Sure, it, well, I'm, I'm sure it's similar to what you talk about with the three levels, you know, the three levels of consciousness. Yeah, so it, I think it's useful to think of it in that way. You know, it, uh, there, there, you, can, you can think of it other ways too, and, and depending on what you're trying to, where you're trying to go with it. But I think that's that's useful. What struck me was the idea of that your 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 soul isn't just sitting on a shelf in your mind. It's way bigger right. than that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good. And uh, in in the um, Taiji tra tradition, the, the the I guess the Taoist tradition this is something that Master Yang was was talking about. The Yang Fukui was talking about. And it was that that. Um, your soul is um, uh, is um, called the hun, uh, and it is uh, it's sort of the the yin aspect of your spirit. And shen is the yang aspect of your spirit. So the fire of spirit that would be shen, and it's 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 the stuff that once once it's the creative element in the uh in in, in spirit and then the hunt is a uh, um 
it's the yin aspect and it's more like what we might call the etheric body or you know the the sense of uh, uh, of of wholeness that is is almost form but it's really really insubstantial and so there's a it's it brings a um, sense of identity i guess with the uh, with 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 you as uh, you have that that aspect there and um, so if we get if we get that we have and and through that we connect up to something much bigger cool anybody else you have some stand <laughs> are you just waving okay oh. no i what i wanted to say i seem to have lost the picture do you hear me i can hear you loud and clear okay it seems like with the exercise that we were just doing uh, it seems like you you replaced the question where am i now with feeling that's that's about the only thing i could see with that uh, I would say it's not, uh, um, I haven't replaced it, but it's a, uh, uh, it's another way of getting there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, so you can still ask the question, where am I now? And here I am as a way of establishing presence. But, um, um, and what that does is it basically clears the mind and allows you to to focus on on just that, but uh, I think you're right in the sense that it might be a, a more efficient way of getting there because you don't really even have to think so much. You just just consciously or you know, intentionally go to a uh, you know to that part of your nervous system which does the feeling. Mm -hmm. So it um, that you can. Uh, you can get there very quickly. Yes, thank you. Cool. Okay, anybody else? All right. So uh, uh, let's uh, let's call it a wrap. Um, thank you all very much. Love you all. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Maria. Bye. You. Bye. 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 Thanks. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Thanks for later. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>